Good On Industries presents Game Time on TL Media. Industries presents Game Time on TL Media. The following is a live presentation of TL Media. Ladies and gentlemen, we are live at Keniston. Producer Mitch, how's it going there tonight? Oh, it's going okay, bud. Right on. We got a good one for you this evening between the Watchers Winterhawks and the Keniston Blizzard. With the win, the Blizzards can advance to the Provincial A Championship Series against the winner of the Round Lake Bears, and the Lumsden Monarchs. We're going to be back with the face-off right away, but first we're going to pause for, and pay a, few, pay a few bills before we begin. I'm uh, Jerry Berthelay. We farm Maple Lake Stock Farms with my wife, Linda, and our son, Tanner. Maple Lake Stock Farms was started by my grandfather in the early 1900s, and I took over in 1981. When I first started, the interest rates were 18 to 21%. Sunrise Credit Union has been with us from the start. All the employees are from the area. They appreciate your success and they know the hardships. To have a supportive lender is huge. They can advise you and guide you in the right direction. I would recommend Sunrise Credit Union. They have made a huge impact in our operation. Hello Canada and hockey fans in the United States, Newfoundland, and wherever you're tuning in. We thank everyone who's watching this broadcast of Good On Industries Game Time on TL Media. And let's take a moment to meet the Winterhawks. Number 30 or number three is Cody Isherwood. Number four, Canton Oliot. Eleven, Clay Frey. Twelve, Braden Van Toon. 
13, Aiden Cummings, 18, Cooper Isherwood, 19, Chad Merton, 20, Brock Hounsell, 21, Gage Helm, 22, Austin Lamont, 23, Dino Antel. I'm going to mispronounce this one. Antonio Alves. Twenty four, Wyatt Johnson. Twenty five, Dylan Smith. Twenty six, Andrew Johnson. Twenty eight, Dawson Baum. 29, Jess Mychen, 33, Sam Clawson, and 77, Woody Clawson. And here we go. We are live in Keniston. Game two. Keniston leads one not leads the series one nothing. And the Winterhawks dump it down the ice. They play it up ahead off the boards. And there's not much happening at the early play. Over the red line across the blue line. The catch takes a shot that hits the lower body of the Winterhawks. Takes a shot, puts on net, and back the other way. It goes down the ice. Bumped into the boards. Sends in front. Takes a shot. Stopped by Peterson, and he holds on for a whistle with 19-19 to go here in the first period. Pretty much how else the crowd in uh, Caniston this evening? Like a packed house, buddy. I would have to say senior hockey is alive and well in Saskatchewan. As the Winterhawks lose the draw, they bank it behind the board. Up ahead. A gay has it at the ice. He passes it over. And behind the net. 
the last broadcast we did in, in this very rink was a double overtime thriller. Caniston won that one to force the game three. Sends in front. Passes it over. Jewel puts it on net. That goes wide. At the red line. Passes it over. Cable's waiting for it right in front of our vantage point. Cable goes hard after it. Banking it off the board is a good defensive play here for the Watchers Winterhawks. And the rose red and white and black trip across the blue line. Takes a shot, knocked away, sent in front, and it turned to side. Across the blue line, the red line. Over. In all on the back end, stopped by Peterson. He had to be sharp on that one, and he holds on for a whistle. Now he tried to go glove side with that backhand, but Peterson stuck the glove up to make that save. 18.32 to go here in the first period. Still no score. And a reminder to everyone, we do not own the rights to any of the music being played in the arena. We do not pretend to own the rights to any of the music. Banked off the board, down the ice. Collision at center ice. And passes it over. Here come the Blizzard. Takes a shot. And a big save there. Turned over. Across the red line. Across the blue line. Takes a shot. Big save. Moves it. Oh, almost the first golden opportunity. Passes it across. Feeds it down low. And, that, and that's Whistle Dead. You're watching Good On Industries Game Time on TL Media. We hope you're enjoying this broadcast so far from the Keniston Arena. Wherever you're tuning in, let us know in the comments where you're tuning in, and we'll give you a shout-out if you want to. Moves it up ahead, the Winter Hawks. Passes it over. Back. Two on one for the Blizzard. Takes a shot. Stop. Demi Turco is in net for, for the Winterhawks as they came close to scoring, opening up, opening it up for their net monitor. Hawk goes up on the ice, swinging and missing at it with number 28, Dawson Bohm. Bumped into the boards. Fifteen twenty to go here in the first period. Still no score between the Winterhawks and the Blizzards. There are several other games going on in the Saskatchewan Provincials, including... We're going to roll that beautiful ticker. In the A North Final... Well, this one that you're watching right now. In the A-South final, it started at 7 o'clock. We still don't have a score. Lumsden and Round Lake. As it takes a shot, stop. He scores! The Blizzards are on the board early. Gets it. A shot from the point and it beat him. And it's one nothing for the Keniston Blizzards. Producer Mitch will have to take a lesson as to who got that goal.
Cable from Haynes opens the scoring and almost doubling their lead with the Blizzards right there. Stabnik sends it down and passes it across. He has it again. Stabnik sends it, takes a shot, stops. The Blizzards have a real control of the play at this moment. Stabnik has it. And plays whistle dead. You're watching Good on Industry Game Time on TL Media. Brought to you by these wonderful people. Good on Industries. Sunrise Credit Union. Zaley Furniture. Springer Construction. Face off now comes in the blizzard's end. The Winterhawks are looking to tie it up. Both the game and the series, they trail 1-0. With a win, Caniston will advance to the Provincial Championship, where they will play either Lumsden or Round Lake. At the moment, Round Lake is trailing 3-1. to one. Passes it across. Turn over at center ice and down the other way. Swing it. Stank off the boards. Moved up ahead. Watchers is breaking in. Trying to get something going here. But a good solid defense for the Blizzards. Breaking that one up. In the corner they have it. They send it across. Passes it over. Behind the net. Back. That's the blue line. Sent down low. The Winterhawks are on the power play here. Shot into the corner. Just trying to... Get control of the play here and down the ice. A good penalty kill for the Blizzards. <laughs> Falling down, passing it over. No call from the official. Cycling it around like the Sabines what used to. Takes a shot, hits a lag, and goes down the ice. Kept in a good defensive play there for the Blizzard. Sends it in front, takes a shot. A big save there to keep this game close. The back in front takes a shot. Short handed, I believe the Blizzards are. Producer Mitch, can you confirm that? No, we are back to even strength. That's one of the disadvantages about the current software we are using. We are always looking for upgrades. But we need more great sponsors like these people. Dobby's Contracting. Davidson Truck and Tractor. Longman Aviaries. Streaming services for TL Media are provided by Voice of Aim Plumbing and Heating. Caniston has it breaking across the red line and they're all into the enemy territory. Rounds the net. 
He takes a bump and he falls hard. The Winterhawks lose it and keeping it in. No good defensive play there by number 12 for the Winterhawks. Sam <laughs> Thune. Levi Cable will open the score and for, for Keniston early, and it's still 1 0 for the Blizzards. If Keniston wins, they will take on either Lumsden or Round Lake, and it is 3 1 in favor of Lumsden. We will try to keep you guys updated as much as we can. On the out-of-town scoreboard. But producer Mitch is busy. I'm busy. and We, re we rely on viewers like you. Of course we do. You guys are the light one of all media. Bumping along the boards in the Keniston end. Behind the net, the Winterhawks have it. Takes a shot, puts it on net. Peterson makes the save. Out of combo, big rebound. Battling on the back up. They're celebrating like they score, but no. Hands up in the air, waving like they just don't care about the ref. He's had none of that. Producer Mitch. Got... Producer Mitch got so excited he left the studio. They... Takes a shot and a big save there. Behind the net. Passing it over. Kennison has it. They're, try they're battling for it. Oh, behind the net. Behind Peterson. And hit him so hard. Play throws. We appear to be having some technical difficulties at the moment. We will be with you as soon as we can. We, I, I apologize for this, folks. We're going to play a quick commercial break and hopefully be right back with you. Dobby's Contracting, David's in Truck and Tractor, Longman Aviaries. Streaming services for TL Media are provided by Boys. Hello, Wolseley. We are here on Saturday, March the 9th. This is Decision Day for Craft Hockeyville, and I'm here with Mayor Gerald Hill. How are yeah. things with you? Pretty good. Pretty exciting day. Yeah, pretty exciting day. We're hoping that we're going to be successful. Good crowd. You can see there's a big crowd here. There's a lot of people here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it just shows that the, the ring gets used. So so we're coming up on 6 o'clock here. And good luck, Wolseley. Yes, good luck, Wolseley. Hopefully we can, uh, we can pull this off and do Western Canada proud. Absolutely. Yeah. Here they are. Way to go, Wolfley! Look at that! How about that, eh? So, for those of you who may have missed it, Wolfley's in the running for top four for Craft Hockeyville. The uh, rink board and the whole, whole gaggle of uh, volunteers did a lot of work to get us to this point. It's not over yet, though, so we're going to be announcing some of the stuff that we need to do to to uh to win the whole darn thing so it's time to bring it to western canada
Can't be prouder of our community. Way to go, Wolseley. <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> All right, that's so it's official. Wolseley is in the top four. What do you think of that? How about that? How about that? That's just amazing. That's the best news I've heard all year. <laughs> That's right, today. But we're going to win this. We are. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, we're going to bring it to Western Canada. So get out there and vote for us, everybody. Yes, and voting day is, what, the 29th, is I it? I believe so. So we basically have to pretty much spam all of our friends we and do. relatives and everybody between now and then saying, yeah. on the day, make sure you vote. Yeah. So uh, big congratulations to the town of Wolseley and all the folks who uh, who worked to make this happen. Absolutely. And yeah. if it wasn't for them. And the kids out on the ice. Yeah. That's what it's all about. That's right. We got a game here about to start. No, it was a lot of volunteers that brought this to the table and uh, did a, a ton of work and good on them, you know, to, to make this a success. So. We couldn't have done it with our volunteers. They're a, they're an integral part of any community, especially our community. So okay. good on you guys. Good for you, Gilly. All right. Good Excellent. Job. One more cheer for Wolfie. Yeah. One more cheer. Welcome back. It appears that uh, whatever was going on in um, Canada has now been resolved. As the Blizzards have it, they take a shot, a big rebound. We get producer Mitch to update us as to the whereabouts of where he went to. So what happened while we were gone, Mitch? Hey, man, uh, I think there's a power outage or something. The scoreboard was off, and I lost Wi-Fi. Okay. Did we miss anything exciting happen? Yeah, Tennessee just scored. Oh, well, we can thank our wonderful technology for that. But sorry, ladies and gentlemen, we missed the Kenneth and goal. Any word on who scored it? Not sure. Okay. Blue Patrol blew it. But producer Mitch never blows it. He always does his best. Down the ice it goes. So a mixed bag whenever you with the technology. Circling around. And that goes wide. Caniston has been the stronger team in the early going. Is, I'm not going to say dominated the flow of the play, but they dominated the flow of the play. Behind the net. Turned over. But the Winter Hawks are always dangerous. Passes it across. In the middle, tips. Takes a shot. We would like to thank our friends at uh, Wolseley is Hockeyville for giving us some filler during that technical difficulty. We do apologize that we missed the Keniston goal, though. But some things are beyond our control. Jay goes hard after him. Bumping into the board. Turns over. Duel. Passes it over. Takes a shot. And then a big save there. Keeping it 2 nothing. You're watching Good On Industries Game Time on TL Media. Brought to you by these people. Good On Industries. Sunrise Credit Union, Zaley Furniture, Springer Construction. Ah, uh, sorry, ladies and gentlemen, I just knocked over a cup of water on my table, but the Winterhawks are still breaking out. They're not letting that stop them. Passes it over. Down the ice it goes. Watchers has it in their own end. Passes it over. The dogs are barking. And the Winterhawks are ready to fly. Passes it up. Behind the net. Mm -hmm. 
The Kyle Elks have knocked off the Cardiff Red Devils 4 knocking this afternoon. They force a third and decisive game tomorrow afternoon. Tomorrow in Kyle. Producer Mitch, are you able to make it to Kyle tomorrow? Across the red line, dumps it down the ice. How far is Kyle from Saskatoon? Pretty far, Jim. Pretty far. Sorry, there was music playing. I'm not sure. Oh, the shot from the point. Tipped and redirected, and it's in the net. They win the face off. They pass it back to the blue line. On a shot from the point. Just beat Peterson to tie the game up. I'm just watching the replay on my TV here on one of her monitors. It's 2 to 1. It is 2 to 1. The Winter Hawk are in flight. Two very winter, winter teams here the Blizzards and the Winter Hawks. There's no better bird to fly through a blizzard than a Winter Hawk. Smith from Johnson puts the Winter Hawk on the board. And down the ice it goes. Passes it over. During the intermission, we will have an episode of the Rod Peterson Show. And I will update the out-of-town scoreboard. What we know so far. What you, the game you're watching right now is 2-1 for the Keniston Blizzards. A win, and they play the winner of Round Lake and Lumsden in the A Championship, in the Provincial A Championship. It is 4-1 now for Lumsden in the second period. Thank you, Reed, for keeping us upbeat. And... Dave White says that the Kyle Elk beat the Cardiff Red Devils 4-0 four, four today. Uh, and the winner of that series will play the Wilkie Outlaws in the, I might get my letters wrong, in the C Championship. The Red vs. Rockets and the Foam Lake Flyers are playing game, game two. In the D South, if the, if Redverse wins, they will advance to the championship against the winner of Delisle and Macklin. So there you have it, folks. Dumped down the ice, and that goes out of play. A good crowd here in Lums or Keniston. I'd imagine it's a really good crowd. Well, not, we're not playing in London, but we're not foreshadowing either, folks. Lumsden could be the next opponent for the Blizzards, or still a lot of hockey to be played. Round Lake, they're a dangerous team. So are the Watchers Winterhawks. I remember heading up to watch us to watch the Mooseman Rangers take the, take on the Winterhawks in the South semifinal or the South final one year. I thought it was a wrong way to go for South final, but that's just the way she goes sometimes. The way she goes, my friend. Puts it in front, chopping it away. Turned over, backhand feed, takes a shot, 
Good to go. Right place, right time, right result for the Blizzards. And a golden lead out. Goes top cheese. Makes it a 3-1 lead. I missed what number that was. From our vantage point, his back his back was to the other side. So if someone was able to see that, leave a message in the comments. Because we're doing our best, but it's not 1080 video by any means. But we're doing what we can. And we have came so far from just being a little tiny hole in the wall. An afterthought. TL Media is no afterthought, ladies and gentlemen. Producer Mitch, did you hear who scored there? Sorry, I kind of missed it. I, I was trying to listen, but the baritone voice of the PA announcer, I couldn't make out. He's got a booming voice. I like, don't get me wrong. Cable has it. He loses it. Then the puck goes high down the ice. Across the blue line. Dumped down the ice. Passes over the shot. Great save. Peterson sticking off the pad. And back the other way. Come the Blizzard. Takes a shot. Oh, that goes high. Knocked away with the blocker. And the Winterhawks recover in the corner. Three one is the score now for the Keniston Blizzard. Across the blue line. Pass in the back to blast. And that goes high and away from the net. Good four check by the Blizzards. They have came to play. So far, they have grounded the Winterhawks for the most part. Passing it up across the blue line. Going across center. He's a Takes a shot almost from a similar position. The third goal went down, but it's kicked aside. A lot of similar to the Sedin style plays for the Blizzard. Breaking in and just leaving it for their player behind them to come up and take a shot. And it's worked a couple times this evening. Behind the net, the Winterhawks have it. Passes it up ahead. Down the ice it goes. And turned over. Feeds it down behind the net. Off the boards. Down the ice it goes. 2.15 to go here. I think we have some bills to finish. We'll be back after these. Good on Industries. Sunrise Credit Union. Zaley Furniture, Springer Construction, Get up, guys. Get up. across the blue line, pizza back. We hope you're enjoying this broadcast wherever you are tuning in from. Whether you're watching it in Keniston or Watrous or South Africa. We've had viewers from all over the world this year. And we look forward to bringing you the, all the action. We have a busy week ahead. I'll get into that as the broadcast goes on. Peterson comes out to play it. Moves it ahead. Yeah. 
Battle in the corner, minute 25 to go here in the first period. Banked off the boards. Out in the blue line, the Blizzards have it. They spin it over. Knocked down, and we have a delayed penalty call. Kenniston is going to go to the power play. Hey, Mitch, I was just thinking about the power, about that power outage. Do you think if they had an inanimate carbon rod, that would uh, have prevented the power outage? Yes. Can you actually see the rod, Mitch? I, I didn't actually get to see the rod, no. But we do have Rod Peterson coming up with the first intermission. Kennison breaks out and they pass it over across the blue line. Takes a shot and a big save there by Peterson. And now, now that Mr. Peterson's here, let's have some fun. Forty-five seconds to go here in the first period. Kennison has a three-to-one lead. Maybe they've noticed some weakness on the watcher's netminder. Turned over because a couple of the goals have been similar style. Behind the net, twenty seconds remain here in period number one. Across. Pass, takes a shot, and that goes wide. Down the ice it goes. Eight seconds. He shoots, he scores! A short-handed goal! And watch out for the winner. That'll give him some momentum heading into the dressing room. It's a 3-2 Blizzard lead. A shorty shot, hit the back, hit the back glass, and it came out right in front. And Peterson couldn't get the glove on that one. It's 3 2 now. So this one around, and they look to rebound after that, giving up a late goal. Nineteen, I believe I heard Merton score to cut the deficit to three to two. Anyway, go make sure your kids are still in bed. Say hi to the wife and of course take that dog for a walk, both of them if you have time. And make sure you come back. Tell a friend. Tell another friend. Tell your acquaintance. Tell your boss you had six years ago. Tell them that it's a 3-2 hockey game on TL Media. And we'll be back in 10 minutes. Or, or a little more. Let's go to commercial, Mitch. You're watching it on Industries Game Time on TL Media. <laughs> Good on Industries. Sunrise Credit Union. Zaley Furniture. Springer Construction. I always, I always enjoy chatting with this guy, the old barn dog, Scott Barney, head coach and GM of the Humble Broncos. Hey, Scott, welcome back to the RP Show. And I don't know if you heard... We wanted to talk a little bit about the Atlanta Thrashers. Uh, we're on the radio in Atlanta every day, WQEE Radio there, 99.1 FM, and you are Thrashers alum. It's a small group, Scott. Uh, what do you remember about that time back in 05, 06? Uh, great to see you first, Roddy. And, uh, yeah, Atlanta Thrashers, that's a long time ago. And uh, you know what's crazy? When you go look up yourself on NHL alumni, you got to click on Winnipeg Jets now. So I guess I'm a Thrasher and Jets alumni, but uh, – you know, Bob Hartley was a, was a coach in there at the time, and 
in the minors, I had Johnny Anderson, Chicago, right? So they're kind of, that's kind of oil and vinegar there, right? So Bob was kind of a hard-nosed guy that uh, really, really taught a lot. But you had like guys like Kovalchuk and Mark Savard there. And you know what? There was a, it's a great fa- practice facility. And I know the players really enjoyed playing there. Well, I was with Bill Lindsay last night. He played for the Thrashers too. And his take is, yes, the NHL should go there, but not anytime soon. I'll put it to you as Thrashers alum. Are you voting yes or no to put a 33rd team in the NHL in Atlanta? Yeah, like, I think Bill's probably probably right there. I don't know if that's the next best spot, right? I think there is some other good spots. Obviously, hey, we will love to see another one in Canada first, but uh, you know what? I think Atlanta has some backing there, those couple different ownership groups that want to come in. Obviously, it's just support the, the Braves well and, and the Falcons and, and the basketball clubs. So I think the support is there. I know at the end there, it, it wasn't with the hockey team, but it, you know what? Look at Minnesota. They came back in the league and probably had the best fan attendance maybe in the NHL. Fantastic sports market for sure. And I know, Scott, you didn't plan to come on here and talk about that. So I appreciate uh, you doing so. Uh, but hey, so tell me if I have this right. You guys still playing a 58 game? season there in the sj 56 56 we have two more left this weekend okay and you're a point up on battlefords for the nutrient division banner um so does that feel like the playoffs have started already are you playing that kind of hockey right now yeah i would say probably the last two or three weeks right and some of those teams there in that uh you know I, i'll give it uh, the the five through through ten those teams have been playing playoffs maybe since since christmas so i think uh, we got we got we got flin flon here for a home and home for our last two games, right? And they're they're probably the the top dog in the league right now. And I think Battleford has Kindersley, who's a big rivalry for their last two. And and you know you gotta be ready here. Obviously you want to get third, but I think there's no there's no easy matchup when you're going in the first round here in the SJHL as you as you know been uh, seen the league for a long time. Well so I guess that's what is your focus right now? Uh, probably a dumb question. Is it just playing your best hockey? Is it getting first place in the division? Is it an eye on the playoffs? What are you striving to your kids right now? Yeah, yeah, good question. Like Our biggest thing is, is just habits, right? It doesn't matter if it's Flynn Flon coming in or you're playing Notre Dame or LaRange. Or, it doesn't matter the club. For us, it's, it's, it's getting our habits. And we want to win every shift, every period, every game. So that's our mentality here this weekend is, is to, to give it our all here so we have good habits when we do step on the ice for game one, whoever that may be in the playoffs. Tell me a little bit about your roster, if you don't mind. Who's uh, carrying the load? And from what I understand, you have a draft-eligible or draft-ranked prospect, too, for the National Hockey League. Can you, can you talk about that? Yeah, we have a draft-ranked player, Matthew Van Blaircom. So he's from Southeast Saskatchewan, and uh, he's a 2006-born player. He also played uh, for me at the World Junior A Challenge where we won the gold medal. He led Team Canada in goals at that event. Uh, you know, he's a player that, that I feel some teams – We'll take a shot at here in the draft. Just uh, you know, he, he he can score goals, but he also can go three at the same time. And he's a player that you know, unlike the CHL players that you have two years of eligibility, he'll be a he's a going into college. So you know, you have that probably three to four window years to to develop him. Uh, Spencer Bell has been incredible for us. Uh, he just got a scholarship to St. Lawrence University Division One. Uh, he's uh, leading the SJHL with forty five goals this season. Uh, Benjamin Motu just got a scholarship to Air Force Division One. Uh, he's been amazing for us in net. So we have a good crew here. I think we're the youngest team right now in the SJHL. But uh, for me, it's not about the age. It's just developing these guys to the next level. And that's in life and, and hockey, right? That's amazing, Scott, that you guys are challenging for first. And with a win or two this weekend, you'll get it. Yet the youngest team in the league. But you guys have always kind of been in your time. Right? Like, where, what's your secret to getting these? Because it's supposed to be an older league, Barn Dog. It's supposed to be. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think we're only carrying five, five, 20 year olds right now. And for me, my biggest thing hasn't been, it's not about age, it's about, you know, what quality of players. And, you know, I think maybe the young, I think the biggest, it is the biggest reason is the young guys that we have moved on to the different levels. And, you know, you take Matthew Perkins, who went second overall in the USHL two years ago, uh, was drafted last year in the fourth round by Vancouver. He's playing at Minnesota Duluth this year. Uh, he's moved on. Connor McGrath, who was CJHL Player of the Year a couple of years ago. You know, those are the players that, that bring 
the next guys in. Uh, you know, we got Connor Miller and Matthew Van Blaircom. We're both 06s that are Division One commitments. So I think the universities believe in what we're doing. Obviously, uh, you know what? The, when they have belief in you, you'll get more players. And and uh, you know what? We just got to keep doing that. And you know, I think winning's a byproduct of, of having good young players. And and for me, it's not really about the age. Two last questions for you, Scott, because I know you're a busy guy running a junior hockey team, but you came the following season after the accident in Humboldt, and it was a job that scared a lot of people off, but you stepped up and said, I'll do it. I'll go in there. And you've done nothing but great things And uh, there. Did you expect to still be there in 2024, to be honest, or did you probably didn't even think about it? When you took over the yeah, I didn't know it was kind of probably month to month, probably first starting out, right? And uh, uh, it's been great experience here. Uh, my wife and family love it. They just love the community here in Humboldt. Uh, good people, great schools. Uh, they're involved in the sports. Uh, you know, you couldn't ask for a better community to raise your family. Uh, you know, when I moved around enough as as a player, I think I played almost in every country. Could probably raise my hand for for that as well. Uh, you know what? It's been great. Uh, you know what? Uh, coming to, to be a humble Broncos coach and GM comes with a, you know it's a, it's a lot of pressure as well. Uh, you know what? That's through social media. That's through just uh, you know with the with the obviously the unfortunate accident. Uh, you know what? It's taught me a lot. Hey, uh, obviously I want to look forward to to moving up in my career here at some point, but it has to take the, the right offer to, to be able to do it. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm happy here in Humble. My family is as well. If something comes along that I, I can't turn down, obviously, hey, I, I gotta look at that. But obviously, like I said, it has to be the, the right opportunity for sure, Rod. Well, I know that the communities embraced you, but it started with you embracing the community. It's a special, special place. And it's funny, you talk about where you played. <laughs> There's teams you played for. I can't even say their name. Amelina, <laughs> Boleslav. Like that was. I guess you chalked that up just as a great learning experience, huh? I don't even know the countries. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's helped me a lot in my coaching side of it too. Just to see the you know what to see the younger programs develop their players and have different coaches from different ethnic backgrounds and and different cultural you know what dealing with players and handling of players. So it's helped me a lot in the coaching side too, Rod. And and you know what you know I was fortunate to be able to play in those countries and and you know I'll tell them, tell our players that there is there's opportunities to play all over the world now in hockey, right? And and there's great players everywhere and uh you know what it's i'm you know what fortunate to be here today coaching the broncos and and uh, looking forward to to uh, hopefully a long playoff run here for us well and i'm looking forward to that too and my last thing is people think as i moved to florida i don't follow junior a i follow it as much as i ever did and i gotta ask you when i talk junior a the BCHL and the AJ thing comes up all the in every conversation it does and i just wonder how that has probably comes up in your daily life too how has that changed how you do business because that wasn't really a thing in 2018 when you came to sask yeah obviously you know what uh, in the coaching business things change pretty quickly or more on the gm side of things and Hey, obviously these teams think they're getting, you know, their players looked at more by going to the BCHL and, and those, those, those teams from Alberta going there. Uh, you know what? My biggest thing is for players is, is you got to go where you're going to play. And, uh, and you know what? We've had success here in Humble. It could be in Timbuktu. Uh, you know what? If you're a good player, you're going to get seen. And, and if you have a good program, uh, you're going to get, uh, you're going to get better as, as a player and, and a person. And that's the biggest thing we, we tell here when we were kind of recruiting our players is, you know, we've moved guys on, uh, the proof is in the pudding. Uh, we want to keep doing that. Hey, if you want to play somewhere else, go ahead. Right. Uh, we want guys that want to be humble Broncos and, and, uh, you know, we've proven to move guys on. And if that's, if that's your goal, then that's great. And I think that's, uh, you know what, I think in the end, it, it's going to make me work harder and make our organization coaching staff and scouts work harder and, and that's okay. And that's, that's the business we're in and, and it's just going to make me work even harder and, and that's okay, Rod. Well, I know you're not afraid of that. Uh, so it's been fun to watch. Yeah, have a great playoff, Scott. Keep doing what you're doing. Obviously, we're following it closely and uh, hope to chat with you. Dobby's Contracting. David's in Truck and Tractor. Longman Aviary. My name is Candace Tolton. I farm here south of Kenton with my husband and our four children. 
We run a mixed farm, which is grain, cattle operation, and our boys have organic chickens. The farm we run here is a fifth generation farm. It was established in 1892. It's a great honour to be the fifth generation and our goal is to keep building this farm to carry on to the next generation. From a financial perspective, being a farmer can be stressful. Land purchasing is very hard to do. Price per acre is extremely high. So it's very important to have a lender like Sunrise Credit Union to guide you through these big steps. I would definitely recommend being a member at Sunrise. They're vital in our farming operation and they have helped us build where we are today. Hello Wolseley, we are here on Saturday, March the 9th. This is decision day for Craft Hockeyville and I'm here with Mayor Gerald Hill. How are things with you? Pretty good. Pretty exciting oh, day? Pretty exciting day. We're hoping that we're going to be successful. Good crowd. You can see there's a big crowd here. There's a lot of people here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it just shows that the, the ring gets used. So. so we're coming up on six o'clock here. And good luck, Wolseley. Yes, good luck, Wolseley. Hopefully we can, uh, we can pull this off and do Western Canada proud. Absolutely. Yeah. Here they are. Look at that! How about that, eh? Yes. So for those of you who may have missed it, Wolseley's in the running for top four for Craft Hockeyville. The uh, rink board and the whole, whole gaggle of uh, volunteers did a lot of work to get us to this point. It's not over yet though, so we're going to be announcing some of the stuff that we need to do to to uh to win the whole darn thing so it's time to bring it to western canada can't be prouder of our community way to go wolseley all right that's so it's official wolseley is in the top four what do you think of that how about that how about that that's just amazing that's the best news i've heard all year <laughs> that's right today but we're gonna win this we are. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, we're going to bring it to Western Canada. So get out there and vote for us, everybody. Yes, and voting day is, what, the 29th, is I it? I believe so. So we basically have to pretty much spam all of our friends we and do. relatives and everybody between now and then saying, yeah. on the day, make sure you vote. Yeah. So uh, big congratulations to the town of Wolseley and all the folks who uh, who worked to make this happen. Absolutely. And yeah. so it wasn't for them. And the kids out on the ice. Yeah. That's what it's all about. That's right. We got a game here about to start. No, it was a lot of volunteers that brought this to the table and uh, did a, a ton of work and good on them, you know, to, to make this a success. So. We couldn't have done it with our volunteers. They're, a, they're an integral part of any community, especially our community. So okay. good on you guys. Good for you. All right. Great Excellent. Job. One more cheer for Worldly. One more we cheer. We did it. Both teams are back on the ice and we're just about ready to start the second period. Let's take a look at the out of town scoreboards as at the bottom of their screen. The north final tonight just underway in Delisle. Macklin taking on Delisle. If Delisle wins, they take in advance of the championship. Foam Lake and Redverse is also just underway. The A South final, that last report, it was 4 1 for Lumsden over Round Lake after two periods. In the South final, Cardiff lost to Kyle 4 0. And game three will go tomorrow in Kyle. Anyway, we are back for period number two. I hope everyone's dog did what they needed them to do and have stopped barking. Mine hasn't, if you can hear it in the faint background. Eventually, he will be quiet, hopefully. 
Gay over the blue line. Moves it back. Sends across. Caniston, Caniston is on the power play to open the period. 3-2 is the score now. Yes, that is correct. Watcher's got a late one. But now it is 4-2. A shot that really had no business going in. It looked like a pass. Put it across. And he's going to want to have that one back. That's for sure, Demi Terrico. 4-2 is the score now. It is getting rough in, in Round Lake, apparently. Friend of TL Media, Reed Vandersar, is saying that they just had two fights. Now it's now they're sending a message for a potential game three tomorrow. I believe that one goes in Ochapaways as well. Correct me if I'm wrong, Reed. But acknowledge me if I'm right. Going crashing into the net. Able to make the save, though. Actually, on replay, he wasn't crashing uh, into the net. Just going hard. John Morasti and Conrad McKay were involved in fisticuffs for the Round Lake Braves. No, the Bears. The Braves are their fastball team. We also hope to have them on TL Media this summer as well. We want to branch out into many different sports. Maybe even dog fighting. No, TL Media will not indulge in dog fighting. We do not condone that one way or another. Watchers. Behind the nut. They have it. Looking to get something going here. Punch for punch. Helmet. Eighteen thirty six. There you go. Sorry, what? Little shot in the slot and a big save there. He's going to pretty much need to stop everything from going in from here on out to give his team a chance, which he certainly could. Jimmy Terco passes it over behind the net. And that one goes for icing. Fifty fifty and around Lake is sitting at eighteen thousand take home. Not hundred, not one thousand eight hundred. Eighteen thousand. If TL Media is lucky enough to make it down to Round Lake to broadcast the provincial final. Oh, and here's Caniston in. Takes the shot. Oh, he missed the net. Back the other way come the Winterhawks. Nope, they turn it over. And let's see. He tried to go right side, but he just missed the net. I believe that was number 50, Gay, with that opportunity. And he usually doesn't miss that.
We still have no report of a score between Delisle and Macklin, as well as Redverse and Foam Lake. Last game, Foam Lake and Redverse went to double overtime, and Redverse snuck it out. I was asked a handful of times if I was going to Radverse. I would have loved to go to Radverse, but right now it's 9.30 in Manitoba and I work at 7 o'clock in the morning. Um, I'm not, I don't really want to... Oh, Reed, what... Thank you for all your help. It is appreciated. Battle along with you on boards. And covering it up was Debbie Terco. I believe we need to go pay some bills, producer Mitch. So we're going to say hey to our friends at Daily's. Dobby's Contracting. David's in Truck and Tractor. Longman Aviary. Streaming services for TL Media are provided by Voice of Aim Plumbing and Heating. Behind the net, the Blizzards have it. They're looking for more. They're looking to bury this one and put it out of reach. Surf one around. Back to the point. Moves it back. Turns over. Watchers has pulled within one a couple of times, but just as Watchers thinks they have all the answers, the Blizzards have changed the question. Down the ice. Moves it ahead. Across. Turned over over the blue line. Gets by the defender. I would like to watch the Kennison Blizzards in person. It's much, much better than uh, watching them off of a very small rectangle on an iPad. Or even, or even a TV. How's everyone doing tonight? We hope you're enjoying the game wherever you are. Even if you're in Mooseman, Saskatchewan, that's where TL Media's next road trip will be. Well, my next road trip. Producer Mitch. You're come, rumor is you're coming to Caniston on Tuesday for the Caniston Dinsmore game. Can you confirm that for our viewers? I can confirm that, yeah. Producer Mitch will be here. He will be in Caniston for game two of game. Two of the league championship series in the South Valley Hockey League. Caniston is up 1-0. The Blizzard, the number three team, I believe, this week on the Monday Nooner Podcast Power Ranking. They do a great job, the Monday Nooner. We appreciate those guys. Just like the HPC podcast. We have an update from Delisle. The Macklin Mohawks lead the Delisle Bruins 1-0 after one period of play. The Macklin wins. They will move on to the Provincial Championship. against the Redverse Rockets or Foam Lake Flyers. Friend of TL Media, 
Reed is working on that, working on finding out that score. Reed is working hard to find out that score. He's a hard-working man. <laughs> He takes a shot and stopped. Our next, on Tuesday, we will be back in Caniston. Between when Caniston takes on Dinsmore. Then on Thursday, game two of the, of the Big Six Hockey League Championship Series between the Mooseman Rangers and Redverse Rockets. Mooseman leads the series one game to none. And we will have games two, four, and five of the Big Six Hockey League Championship Series. We have an update from Redverse. Redverse leads Foam Lake 2-1 to one after one period of play. Watchers breaks out over the blue line. Takes a shot, hits a leg, and that goes high. And Surfing it around, passes it over, sends it across. Takes a shot, stopped by Peterson. Bumped into the boards and he fell hard. And I think he's like, why you ain't got no tang to make to the ref on that one? But he's getting the call. So there you have it, producer bitch. You challenged me. It is, it is 316 today. For those uh, professional wrestling fans, know that uh, it is Stone Cold Steve Austin, Austin 316 day. Holy moly. Nine to one runs them after two periods of play. Johnny Bear and the rest of the team on the broadcast and the Brown Lake Bears. They have a, uh, they have a giant hole to get out of. They need a two point converted touchdown to, get, to tie the game. Passes it across. At the moment, takes a shot. It would appear that the Lumsden Monarchs are going to force a game three back in Ochapaways tomorrow. And we'll take a quick time out here. You're watching Good on Industries. No, we won't. Nope, we won't. Cancel that. Next whistle, we will. 10-16 to go here. Second period. Okay, maybe not the next whistle. Back to the point. Sends it down the road. Takes a shot. Big save there. Down the ice. Passes it. To really no one. There's a battle right in front of us. Yes, uh, Reed, we did catch the comment, and I also got a message on Twitter. Um, let's take a quick, take a quick Good comment. on industry. Sunrise Credit Union. Zaley Furniture. Springer Construction. Wins it back. Kennison has it. They put it on that. And he holds on for a whistle. So, let's recap the scores that we know so far. Delisle. Trails 1-0 to Macklin after the first period. Red versus up 2-1 to 
on Foam Lake after the first period. If those scores hold up, Redverse will play Macklin in the Provincial Championship Series. Earlier in the day, Kyle defeated Karnda 4-0. Setting up a Game 3 tomorrow in Kyle. The winner of that game will play the Wilkie Outlaws in the league or in the C champ championship. And Washers with the shot. Stopped by Peterson. And in the A South final, the Round Blake Bears are trailing 9 to 1 to the Lumsden Monarchs. Looking almost certain like there will be a game three tomorrow in El Chapo. No, Reed, you're not bombarding me at all. Thank you for letting me know. Passes it over. Back to the point. Over the blue line. Passes it over. Good spin move. Spinning around by the Hawks. And just stopping that. It's a, what appear to be a loud arena here tonight in Kennison. Agree or disagree, producer Mitch? Agreed. Producer Mitch is also TL Media's most eligible bachelor. Because, well... He's the only bachelor on TL Media. <laughs> if you're interested in getting to know producer Mitch, he's just a message away. He's a good guy. Longtime friend. I, I can vouch for him. I've known him for 30 plus years. Wow, I feel old now. Falling down. We are AIDS, Travis. What's that, sonny boy? Oh, you're just a young whippersnapper yet, Mitchell. Across the blue line. Passes it over. Off the boards. Giving away our age. That's a paddle. <laughs> Behind the net. Passes it up across the blue line. Banked off the board. Sent across. Good penalty kill for the Kennison Blizzard. Passes it over. Smith. You got to watch out for Smith with the white helmet. That's it. So he's pinching in. Smith went down. Down the ice. And Watchers has the power play here. Across the blue line. Good play there. He, Lamont has some wheels on him. He went breaking in. Watchers isn't out of this game yet. They're a tough team, and they've got some guys with, with some wheels, like the line of Smith, Lamont. Now on the ice is Johnson. He's going to take the draw. Against McVeigh, I believe. Takes the shot. Big save, big rebound. Back to the point it goes. Down. Pass it in front. Oh, just out of reach. Out of sprawling around. Over the blue line, going in hard. Circling over. Trying to get it down low. Trying to kill more clock. Is that 9.15 to go here in period number two? It could be 9 or it could be a 4.15. That's, that's correct. Falling down just like London Bridge. Mm -hmm. 
A reminder that Craft Hockey Bill is coming up. And you are encouraged to vote for Wolseley. They are the only Saskatchewan representative. And Saskatchewan's never won Craft Hockey Bill. Saskatchewan is going absolutely crazy for senior hockey. As we saw last a couple weeks ago on my on March the 5th, when we had about 6,000 viewers watch our game on a cold Tuesday night. We thank everyone who tuned in for that one. And everyone who's tuning in tonight as well. Kennison has it. They pass it over. Sends it down low. Back. That's the point. Puts it on that. Redirected. And that goes into the corner. They pass it back. Playing, playing catch here. Playing catch with the puck. That's what good teams do. That's how they know how to win. Back. Sends it across the shot. And that's stopped. Gay passes it up ahead. Out of... Sends it across. Moving it down. Down the ice it goes. Out to play for play with Peterson. Gay watches his man go over. Passes it across. Over the blue line. Over the red line. Over the blue line. Passes it. Breaking out in the middle. Takes it, puts it on that big save there. Now that's gloved down into the goalie, and he hangs on for a whistle. Demi Terrico. So let's recap the provincial scores. A, the A South final. It appears it is heading to a game three. Round Lake. Currently trailing Lumsden nine to one in the second period. Takes a shot. Stopped by Demi Perko. Back passes it over. Passes it across. Down in the corner. The blast takes a shot and a big save there by Demi Perko. The blast takes a shot and another big save. If Watrous is able to come back, I think uh, Demi Terrico is going to. Well, that that makes a big difference, Reed. And so does that. It's a five-two lead for Kenniston. Oh, Doctor! It's like the hot dog guy following Homer. Putting the kids through college, and it would appear that the blizzards are 25 minutes away from going to the provincial championship. But it's not over yet. The Winter Hawks are a strong team, and they're capable of flying through the storm and weathering the blizzard. But you're down 5 2. The blizzards show no signs of letting up. Tomorrow. Lumsden will host the Round Lake Braves. Bears, rather. Bears. The, Bear, the Braves are their fastball team. It's great to see communities like Round Lake. Have such a strong vote. Not tonight, obviously, but tomorrow they're going to give Lumsden a run for their money. And it, it will be a good game. Home ice appears to not be an advantage in that series. The road team has won every game, both of them. And getting back to here. Keniston won game one. And they're 
About 6.49 left here in the second period. They're 26 minutes away from punching their ticket to a second straight provincial championship series. Pass is all over, yeah. As Bjorn who gets it down the ice. Sends it across. Redirected. Peterson has to be sharp on that one. Shot goes wide. Behind the net. Watchers have it. Sends it in front. Thank the Kenison Blizzards for creating this opportunity to bring this action to you and creating this broadcast location for producer Mitch. You recall last game while he was trying to shoot it over some fans' heads. But we have a prime broadcast location. And producer Mitch, would you like to say a few words? It's great, Bob. He's a man of few words. Any questions? <laughs> Canison bangs it off the board, passes it down ahead. Um, Canison has another opportunity. The blast from the point, and that goes wide. 4.14 to go here in period number two. 5 2 is the score in favor of Kennison. As the winner has break out of the pass, and that's just a bit offside. We'll take a break. You're watching Good on Industry Game Time on TL Media. Good on Industries. Sunrise Credit Union. Zaley Furniture. Springer Construction. We have a busy head, week ahead, ladies and gentlemen. Tuesday night, we got Dinsmore against Caniston. Thursday, it's the Big Six Hockey League Championship. Game two, Mooseman against Redbirds. As Caniston breaks in. Then, at the moment, our Friday schedule is clear, but that could change at a moment's notice and a few sponsors. Saturday, that depends. There's a game in Rokenville, which could be live on TL Media. The blast from the point, that goes wide. Anyway, stay tuned to our social media pages for our complete broadcast schedule. Across the blue line, passes it over. Down low. And of course, it will all depend on provincial play. We know the league schedule. We don't know provincials. We absolutely want to make it to, if I live in the South, I, I live in, well, I don't even live in Saskatchewan. I live in Manitoba, <laughs> but I travel to Saskatchewan quite a bit because the caliber of hockey and hockey is alive and well in, in Saskatchewan. It is incredible. The support that we receive on TL Media. <laughs> And Saskatchewan's my home province. Manitoba is also one of my home provinces as well. That's where my kids are born and where we're going to raise them. But I will never be bleed blue. Always, always bleed green. Yeah. 
Sends it down. No matter how bad they are. Low diving. No. Is the ref going to call a penalty? Yeah, he has a hand up. A trip. 2.48 to go. Let's take a quick time. Dobby's contracting. Davidson Truck and Tractor. Longman Aviaries. Streaming services for TL Media are provided by Voice of Ain Plumbing and Heating. Two on one back, passes it over, takes a shot. Oh, inches away from putting this one out of reach. But back the other way come the Winterhawks. Takes a shot, stopped by Peterson. Another big shot, another big save by Peterson. Oh, the Winterhawks are showing some signs of life here at the later stage of the secondary. Passes it over in the corner, puts it over. Stopped by Peterson and it goes behind the net. Over in the far corner. Pass it down. Over in the far corner once again. Back at the point, takes a shot. Another stop by Peterson. Peterson's been a brick wall in the second period. If you would like to be a guest on the second period intermission show, leave a message in the comments. Well, well, you got to keep uh, your comments and your talk within the boundaries of good taste, otherwise we'll boot you instantly. But it would be great to hear from our fans. Across the blue line. Watchers. Back and feet. Up back. If not, we'll just uh, play some commercials. Takes a shot. Shot by Peterson. Big rebound. He's, he scores! Another late goal given up. Gives the Winterhawks some life. They're not grounded yet, ladies and gentlemen. Minute, nine, minute 29 to go here in the second period. It's almost time to take the dogs for a walk once again. Or maybe give them some food at the next time during the first intermission. That's my plan. Poor puppies need to eat. Passes it across. Back. Takes it. No, he faked the shot. He faked it. Passes it across. Turns over. Back the other way. Here come the Winterhawks. Possible chance for one more. Sends it over. Good defensive play there, breaking up the opportunity. Wozlaszewski. <laughs> Driving hard the Winterhawks. 5-3 is the score. Pushing hard. Wozlaszewski. Number 55 for the Blizzards. He's still on the ice. Turns over the backhand feet up ahead. 38 seconds to go. Second period. Well, apparently that was a zero, producer Mitch. Um, so that wraps up the second period. The Watchers Winterhawks need to come out with a big third period if they're going to stave off elimination. But the Blizzards are 20 minutes away from going to another provincial championship. 
who will prevail? Go, take your dog for a walk, refill your beverage, whatever you're drinking. Go say hi to the wife. Make sure your kids are still sleeping. Whatever you need to do, just make sure you're back for period number three. You're watching Good On Industries Game Time on DL Media. Good On Industries. Sunrise Credit Union. Zaley Furniture. Springer Construction. My name is Kristen Timmerman and I'm an agronomist at Circle T Agra and I'm the CEO of my own company Inputs Pro. Circle T Agra is our family owned independent retail located in Treehearn, Manitoba. We supply seed, fertilizer, chemical and custom application to growers in our area. Inputs Pro is a mobile app or web platform that allows growers, agronomists and retails to access all of the information from the Crop Protection Guides for Western Canada. I hope that the legacy of Inputs Pro is to be that resource that is not company specific and is there for the grower when they need it. Running a tech company in a rural community is just such an awesome experience for me and the community itself. Seeing small businesses like myself grow into what they are, especially in these small communities, is just a whole nother level of excitement. Sunrise Credit Union is a local cooperative financial institution. They have helped our family for the last 25 years to grow our business into what it is today. Having a supportive lender is important for the growth and scale of our business. In such a volatile industry like agriculture, we need somebody that can accommodate our needs specific to our company. Sunrise Credit Union is such an important part of our community. They're always helping sponsor hockey teams and local events. I would recommend being a member of Sunrise Credit Union because they are there for you as a customer. They're really striving to make your goals become a reality. Hello Wolseley, we are here on Saturday, March the 9th. This is Decision Day for Craft Hockeyville, and I'm here with Mayor Gerald Hill. How are things with you? Pretty good. Pretty exciting day? Yeah, pretty exciting day. We're hoping that we're going to be successful. Good crowd. You can see there's a big crowd here. There's a lot of people here. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it just shows that the, the ring gets used. So. so we're coming up on 6 o'clock here. And Good luck, Wolseley. Yes, good luck, Wolseley. Hopefully we can, uh, we can pull this off and do Western Canada proud. Absolutely. Yeah. Here they are. Jerry, we did it! Woohoo! Way to go, Wolseley! Look at that! How about that, eh? So for those of you who may have missed it, Wolseley's in the running for top four for Craft Hockeyville. The uh, rink board and the whole whole gaggle of uh, volunteers did a lot of work to get us to this point. It's not over yet, though, so we're going to be announcing some of the stuff that we need to do to to uh, to win the whole darn thing. So it's time to bring it to Western Canada. Can't be prouder of our community. Way to go, Wolseley! All right, that's so it's official. Wolseley is in the top four. What do you think of that? How about that? How about that? That's just amazing. That's the best news I've heard all year. <laughs> that's right, today. But we're going to win this. We are. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, we're going to bring it to Western Canada. So get out there and vote for us, everybody. Yes, and voting day is what the 29th is I it? I believe so. So we basically have to pretty much spam all of our friends we and do. relatives and everybody between now and then saying yeah. on the day make sure you vote. Yeah. So uh, big congratulations to the town of Wolseley and all the folks who uh, who worked to make this happen. Absolutely. And yeah. if it wasn't for them. And the kids out on the ice. Yeah. That's what it's all about. That's right. We got a game here about to start. No, it was a lot of volunteers that brought this to the table and uh, did a, a ton of work and good on them. 
you know, to, to make this a success. So we couldn't have done it with our volunteers. They're, a, they're an integral part of any community, especially our community. So okay. good on you guys. Good for you, Gilly. All right. Excellent. Job. One more cheer for World League. <laughs> One more we cheer. Did it! Taking a look at the out of town scoreboard, Lumpton leads around Lake 9 to 1. And we can all but assume that game three will be tomorrow in Lumsden. The C final, Kyle knocked off Karnda for nothing, and game three will go tomorrow afternoon in Kyle. Macklin leads to Lyle one nothing after the first. And in the in Redverse, Redverse leads Foam Lake two to one after the first period. Shots on net were Redverse 23, Foam Lake 6 out in the first period. I just read that on social media. So the Rockets, they're, they came out blasting, and they're looking to blast off to the Provincial Championship. But Foam Lake, it's no slouches either. We'll be back with more Good on Industries game time after, after a word from our sponsors. I'm uh, Jerry Berthelay. We farm Maple Lake Stock Farms with my wife, Linda, and our son, Tanner. Maple Lake Stock Farms was started by my grandfather in the early 1900s, and I took over in 1981. When I first started, the interest rates were 18 to 21%. Sunrise Credit Union has been with us from the start. All the employees are from the area. They appreciate your success and they know the hardships. To have a supportive lender is huge. They can advise you and guide you in the right direction. I would recommend Sunrise Credit Union. They have made a huge impact in our operation. Have you guys heard of Craft Hockeyville? Well, March 29th and 30th is your chance to get a game, an NHL game in Saskatchewan. This year, Wolseley is in the running, and you are all encouraged to vote for Wolseley for Hockeyville. Hello, Wolseley. We are here on Saturday, March the 9th. This is Decision Day for Craft Hockeyville, and I'm here with Mayor Gerald Hill. How are things with you? Pretty good. Pretty exciting day. Yeah, pretty exciting day. We're hoping that we're going to be successful. Good crowd. You can see there's a big crowd here. There's a lot of people here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it just shows that the, the ring gets used. So. so we're coming up on 6 o'clock here. And good luck, Wolseley. Yes, good luck, Wolseley. Hopefully we can, uh, we can pull this off and do Western Canada proud. Absolutely. Yeah. Here they are. Way to go, Wolfley! Look at that! How about that, eh? So, for those of you who may have missed it, Wolfley's in the running for top four for Craft Hockeyville. The uh, rink board and the whole, whole gaggle of uh, volunteers did a lot of work to get us to this point. It's not over yet, though, so we're going to be announcing some of the stuff that we need to do to to uh, to win the whole darn thing. So it's time to bring it to Western Canada. Can't be prouder of our community. Way to go, Wolseley! <laughs> Woohoo! All right, that's so it's official. Wolseley is in the top four. What do you think of that? How about that? How about that? That's just amazing. That's the best news I've heard all year. <laughs> That's right, today. But we're going to win this. We are. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, we're going to bring it to Western Canada. So 
Get out there and vote for us, everybody. Yes, and voting day is, what, the 29th, is I it? I believe so. So we basically have to pretty much spam all of our friends we and do. relatives and everybody between now and then saying, yeah. on the day, make sure you vote. Yeah. So uh, big congratulations to the town of Wolseley and all the folks who uh, who worked to make this happen. Absolutely. And yeah. if it wasn't for them. And the kids out on the ice. Yeah. That's what it's all about. That's right. We got a game here about to start. No, it was a lot of volunteers that brought this to the table and uh, did a, a ton of work and good on them, you know, to, to make this a success. So. We couldn't have done it with our volunteers. They're a, they're an integral part of any community, especially our community. So okay. good on you guys. Good for you, Gilly. All right. Excellent. Job. One more cheer for Worsley. <laughs> One more we cheer. Did it! Dobby's Contracting, Davidson Truck and Tractor, Longman Aviaries. Streaming services for TL Media are provided by Voice of Aim Plumbing and Heating. My name is Candace Tolton. I farm here south of Kenton with my husband and our four children. We run a mixed farm, which is grain, cattle operation, and our boys have organic chickens. The farm we run here is a fifth generation farm. It was established in 1892. It's a great honor to be the fifth generation, and our goal is to keep building this farm to carry on to the next generation. From a financial perspective, being a farmer can be stressful. Land purchasing is very hard to do. Price per acre is extremely high. So it's very important to have a lender like Sunrise Credit Union to guide you through these big steps. I would definitely recommend being a member at Sunrise. They're vital in our farming operation and they have helped us build where we are today. Good on industry. Sunrise Credit Union, Zaley Furniture, Springer Construction. My name is Candace Tolton. I farm here south of Kenton with my husband and our four children. We run a mixed farm, which is grain, cattle operation, and our boys have organic chickens. The farm we run here is a fifth generation farm. It was established in 1892. It's a great honor to be the fifth generation, and our goal is to keep building this farm to carry on to the next generation. From a financial perspective, being a farmer can be stressful. Land purchasing is very hard to do. Price per acre is extremely high. So it's very important to have a lender like Sunrise Credit Union to guide you through these big steps. I would definitely recommend being a member at Sunrise. They're vital in our farming operation and they have helped us build where we are today.
A blizzard warning has been issued for the third period. Caniston, they can advance with if they're able to hold on. Right, they have a 5-3 lead right now. The blizzards can be very strong at times. And a, and a large possession. Winterhawks are expected to move quickly, though, and proceed with caution. And they look to strike first early and often to try to get back into this one. The blizzard. Dump it down the ice. So, North Division A Category Championship Game 2. Keniston leads 5-3 after two periods of play. Takes a shot. Stopped by Peterson. Producer Mitch. How's it going tonight? Oh, music. All right. Yes, we do not own the rights to any of the music. We never try to claim that we do. So Facebook. We don't own any of the music. Watchers has it. They dump it down the ice and falling down. Banked off the boards. Bumped into the boards. Gets dumped down the ice. Koshinsky back to play it. He's been a rock on the Blizzard's back end. 5 3 is the score. Turned over. Good defensive play there by the Blizzard. Passes it over. Driving hard. Good play. Moves it over. 18-18 to go here in period number three. The Winterhawks have struck late in the last two periods. Takes a shot. Stopped by Peterson and he holds on for a whistle. With 17.56 to go here in the first period, third period. It is the first third period of the game, but it is the third period nonetheless. Takes a bump into the boards. Takes a shot. Big save there by Demetrico. Blast from shot from the point. Turned aside. Blizzard's moving up ahead across the blue line. And that one's just a bit offside. You're watching Good On Industries Game Time on TL Media. Good On Industries. Sunrise Credit Union. Zaley Furniture. Springer Construction. Congratulations to the Miota Combine. They are the 
SPHL championships. That is four wins in a row and five championships in the last six seasons. Would you call that a dynasty? Four, four championships in a row. Five, or four out of the last five. Um, I would. I'll, I'll call that a dynasty. The Miota Combine Dynasty. The Winterhawks, they're looking to get right, get back into this one. They need a couple quick ones. They trail by two. Driving hard. Turned over, dumped down the ice. And we'll take a break. Dobby's Contracting. David's in Truck and Tractor. Longman Aviaries. Streaming services for TL Media are provided by Voice of Aim Plumbing and Heating. Watch us breaking out over the blue line. Passed over. Dumped down the ice behind the net. Oh, a good collision behind the net. Trying to give his team some life. Two on one back the other way. But offside. No. I'm hearing things. I, I heard a whistle. Maybe it's just the wind outside. It's quite windy here in Bolsonaro. Passes it over. The Rocks have it in their own end. Sends it across. We have an update from Redverse. The Redverse Rockets lead LaFoam Lake Flyers 5-3 to three after two periods of play. Redverse 5, Foam Lake 3. The exact same score here. Banked off the boards. The Rockets are looking to blast off into the provincial championship series against the winner of Delisle and Macklin. At the moment, Macklin, at last report, Macklin was up one to, one to nothing after one period. Went to back. Grabbing hard, puts it on, and he shoots, he scores! Six to three! And ladies and gentlemen, that might do it. The Blizzard keep getting stronger as the game goes on. 14.05 to go here in the third period. <laughs> 18, McVeigh with the goal on that one. If I heard that correctly. It is now a 6-3 lead. 
for the Callison Blizzard. You're watching Good On Industries Game Time on TL Media. We have a final score from Round Lake, and it's not pretty. 11 to 2 is the final score in favor of the Lumsden Monarchs. Flexing their muscle big time to stave off elimination. Game three in that series will go tomorrow in Lumsden. Earlier today, the kind of Red Devils felt, dropped a 4 nothing decision to the Kyle Elks. Game three will go tomorrow in Kyle. Tennyson is 12.45 away from advancing to the Provincial Championship. We have an update from Delisle. 2 nothing Macklin after 40 minutes. If both of these scores hold up, takes a shot, that goes high. Thank you for tuning in, Ron. Um, we hope you're enjoying it all the way in Mexico as it's a two-on-one. Takes a shot. He scores! And you can put that in his hand. The TL Media Decision Desk is declaring this one over in favor of the Keniston Blizzards. Seven to three now. The extra point is good. And the Blizzards are on the verge of going back to the Provincial Championships. Passes it over. 11.44 to go here in the third period. And Rod Roberts is loving that in Mazatlan. Over the blue line. Circling around, passing it back to the point. Passes. If this score holds up, they await the winner of Round Lake and Lumsden. Round Lake has been playing the tournament circuit all season. They haven't played league play, but they have played in tournaments, and they've been very successful. They actually won the, tur the big First Nations tournament that Brandon holds, defeating some strong teams along the way. So they're not just throwing together for like, some guys off the street. They actually plan, and they do play together all year. Not in league play, though. Passes it up. Turns over. They actually, in the Brandon tournament, they defeated a good friend of TL Media, Ed Dick. He's involved with the Lane Stars. 
And his boys won it all last year. But Round Lake knocked off Ed's team to win the Brandon tournament. That is a very good friend of TL Media. We know a lot of people like to trash him on this platform, but he's always been nothing but gold to me, and I will not be, no, will not tolerate any nonsense towards him. Love the guy or hate him. We wouldn't be where we are today if it wasn't for him. And he's even involved today with Good On Industries Game Time. He'll, he'll give you the shirt off his back. He's a, he's a good guy and you want him on your side. Behind the net. Watchers has it. Passes it up ahead. Holds it. Passes it over. Bumped into the boards. They just look defeated on the watcher's bench. Gets over. Takes a shot. Big rebound. Down low, sends across. Cool, sends it. Across the blue line, red line. And we should probably talk about the Tiger Hills Hockey League. The Minnesota Elkhorn Seahawks are looking for back-to-back -back league championships. But it won't be easy. They play uh, the top team from the, the other division, who they lost to during the regular season, but they were missing a whole bunch of, whole bunch of guys that night and might have been a little deflated that night against Killarney. Killarney is a good team, though. They purchased some good players during the offseason and had the benefit, were the beneficiaries of one of the teams not, not returning and picking up a couple of their players. So really, the predictability in that league was Nail for wait the un it was a very predictable league this entire year for the Tiger Hills Hockey League. Everybody and their dog predicted it would be Minnesota Elkhorn against Killarney in the league championships. Oh, and look at that! It is. It should be a great series between those two strong clubs. And we will cover it. We might not be there in person because of our commitments to Saskatchewan. But we will cover it on our social media platforms. And Watchers is on the power play, looking desperately trying to get back in here. Passes it over, sends it across, back to the point. Another blast, and they put it on that. Big scramble. The camera gets jarred loose a little bit. And that goes out of play. You're watching Good On Industries Game Time on TL Media. Good On Industries. Sunrise Credit Union. Zaley Furniture. Springer Construction. Some huge games tomorrow. The Kyle Elks. A look to advance to the provincial championship. But standing in their way are the Kanda Fred Devils. The winner plays the juggernaut Wilkie Outlaws. They have a very strong team and friend of TL Media, Edmonton radio star AJ Keller, is a proud Wilkie. But, proud of his hometown Wilkie and justifiably so they're always strong and everyone I've met from Wilkie is a class act so 
Good luck to them in the next round. Passes it over. Sends it across. Down low. And Caniston. Barring a massive collapse, they're going to the league, going to the provincial championship. Against who? We'll find that out tomorrow in Lumsden. Producer Mitch, would you want to make a trip to Lumsden tomorrow? Mm -hmm. Unfor <laughs> Unfortunately, I don't that's think possible. that's feasible. I don't know where London is. London's just outside of Regina. But when I lived in Regina, I spent some time at the London Bar, and they love their monarchs. They sure did. And they have a strong team. Six forty five puck drop tomorrow. Oh. That's seven forty five my time. I'm done work at three thirty ish, which is two thirty Saskatchewan time. Drop, drop my kids off in Moose without my mom's. No, no, it is not possible. Especially with having to work at 7 a.m. the next day. Oh. If wishes were fishes, eh? But they do a good job streaming the game over on uh, the Round Lake Bears Facebook page and a few off-color remarks, but that's that's the way she goes. When you have a live microphone, you're going to have a few off-color remarks. Like, rhymes with duck for a thousand. Let's take a quick commercial break. Dobby's Contracting. Davidson Truck and Tractor. Longman Aviaries. Streaming services for TL Media are provided by Voice of Aim Plumbing and Heating. Dumps it down. Five thirty to go here in period number three. Nobody has left the Keniston Arena, and we're looking forward to covering more games at the Keniston Arena, starting on Tuesday when the Dinsmore Dynamos are in town for the League Championship Series. Then Thursday, I'm heading to my hometown. I'm not a homer, but I'm heading to my hometown of Mooseman to watch an exciting game between a couple very strong teams, the Mooseman Rangers and the Redverse Rockets. That series is taught, well, that series is Mooseman leads 1-0 after knocking off the Rockets last night. But Red versus up five to three in the provincial game. As Kennison breaks out, Yakubelski, he takes a shot. That goes wide. Big rebound. It goes behind the net. Passes it up. Takes a shot. Stop. And a big save there. We'll take a break. Good on, Industries. Sunrise Credit Union. Zaley Furniture. Springer Construction.
Tuesday, we are back in Kennison. Thursday, Mooseman. At the moment, nothing on Friday. Saturday, possibly Rokenville. Sunday, who knows? It'll all depend, though, on what the schedules look like in the provincial championship. Circling around. Across the red line. Passes it over. Takes a shot and a goal! Needham glove side. And it's an 8-3 game. Sending some angry emotions to our media. It's not our fault. Canison, they're strong. They're stronger than the inanimate carbon rock. And there's not much um, The Watchers Winterhawks ain't got no tang this, e this evening. 4.15 to go. the blue line. We hope you're all enjoying um, tonight's broadcast of Good on Industry Game Time on TL Media. Unfortunately, I see that one person on our Facebook page isn't. But our apologies. We hope you're enjoying the broadcast, at least, even if the score's not going in your way. Our next broadcast will be Tuesday, back in Caniston, as they look to take a stranglehold in the league championship series. Watchers passes it over. Down the ice it goes. Handled. Across the blue line. Over the red line. Over the blue line. Sends it over. Moving it around. Watchers. Almost has to throw everything on the kitchen sink. And they did, and they score. It's an 8 4 lead now. They only need about a goal every 30 seconds to tie this one up. 8 4 is the score. Stranger things have happened. They just need to get it, shoot, score. Get it, shoot, score. Get it, shoot, score. Get it, shoot, score. That's the how. That's what Rufflockus needs to do. Well, they get it. They move it over. Across the red line. 8-4 is the score here. They need to almost score on every shot from here on in. As they turn it over. No, they have it back in the blue line, though. Passes it across, and that one's offside. With just over 2 With 2.24 remaining. In period number three, eight four is the score. Watch this as it sends it across. The blast takes a shot. Big save there, Peterson. Two thirty.
2.30. Nope. Minute 57 remaining here in the third period. Keniston leads 8-4. Watchers has it over the blue line. Driving it down low. Passes it up. Over across. Turns over. Back down the ice it goes. Takes a shot. Stop. And that goes out of play. You're watching Good On Industries Game Time on TV. Good On Industries. Sunrise Credit Union. Zaley Furniture. Springer Construction. Watchers comes away with it after the draw. Number 12 breaks out, dumps it down the ice. Minute 15 to go here. As my iPad just tells me, I have 5% battery left. About the same as the Watchers Winterhawks have of coming back to win this game. Slim to none, and I believe Slim has just went out to start the bus. Yeah, 52.8 seconds to go here. The celebrations have already started, I believe. <laughs> Captain. Just trying to move it over. Sends it across. Takes a shot. Stopped by Peterson. Twenty seconds to go. Dumped down the ice. Knocked away. And on this day, Austin three sixteen day. Keniston 316 says I'm going to the provincial championship. And that's the bottom line because the Blizzard said so. They will meet the winner of Rumsden and Round Lake. And that series goes tomorrow night in Rumsden. <laughs> For Travis Longman in Boys of Maine, Nick Selkirk in Caniston. We want to thank everyone for tuning in. And we'll see you Tuesday night for Caniston, Dinsmore, Game 2. Good night, everybody. Oh, yeah. Shit happened.